Good morning and welcome. We're glad that you're able to tune in with us this morning as we gather uh, on this, the uh, 10th of May, uh, Mother's Day, and we're reminded of the ways in which those uh, special people have been important in our lives and uh, know that in a deed why they have been a marvelous gift to us and for that why we say thank you. I'd invite you now to pause with me as we listen uh, to the prelude that was being played uh, by Colleen. Let us begin with prayer. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for your marvelous presence in our lives and for your comforting words of hope and promise that you offer to us. As we gather this day, why we, are, we will hear the, the words that you spoke to your disciples long ago, uh, encouraging them in the midst of what would be a great deal of separation. And we pray that uh, we hope and pray that in the midst of our own uh, necessary separations that you will continue to bless each of us with your spirit of comfort and hope. Grant us your grace for we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Let us sing This is the Day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Oh, 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 
Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in our fonts, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. Do you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading today is from Acts chapter 7. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against them. Then they dragged him out of the city and they began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Here ends the reading. Our psalm is Psalm 31. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand, rescue me from the hand of the beast, and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant, save me in your steadfast love. from 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, 
yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do so. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. In, in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Some thoughts as we consider these words of Jesus to his disciples. A young woman sat at a hospital bed of an older man who was dying. And she asked him, Do you want me to read you the sweetest promise in the scriptures? He smiled weakly and said, Yes, young lady, I would. She opened her Bible and began reading John 14. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And she paused. The older man put his hand on hers and said, keep reading, please. That's not the best part. She kept reading. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The man closed his eyes and smiled. Peace came over his face and he told her, that is the sweetest verse, my dear. It is not the mansions, it's Jesus I want. The promise in this verse is clear and comforting. There's no reason for the Christian to let fear and anxiety to rule the day. 
Eric Clapton wrote a heart-wrenching song about the death of his four-year-old son. His son fell from a 53-story window. Clapton took nine months off, and when he returned, why, his music had changed. The hardship had made his music softer, more powerful, more reflective. You most likely have heard that song that he wrote about his son's death. It's a poignant song of hope. Would you know my name if I saw you in heaven? Would it be the same if I saw you in heaven? I must be strong and carry on because I know I don't belong here in heaven. Would you hold my hand if I saw you in heaven? Would you help me stand if I saw you in heaven? I'll find my way through night and day because I know I just can't stay here in heaven. Time can bring you down, time can bend your knees, time can break your heart. Have you begging, please, begging, please. Beyond the door there's peace, I'm sure, and I know there'll be no more tears in heaven. Jesus had just participated in the Passover meal with his disciples. He's just washed their feet in an act of servanthood. He has foretold his betrayal, which Judas will soon perform. He has predicted Peter's denial. He has told them he is leaving. But he adds this word of hope. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you and will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. Hardship has a way of getting our attention. Pain slows us down. It can even soften us. Very few of us after facing a trial come out the same way we entered in. Jesus understood this and attempted to prepare his disciples for this road that lay ahead. He wanted them to know first of all, if you have faith in me, you will overcome your worry. It seems almost impossible, doesn't it? Getting rid of worry? But let me tell you, it is absolutely essential that we be free of worry because worry distorts reality. Worry oftentimes leads us to false conclusions. I remember a story about a plane ride where the pilot came over the intercom and said, we have lost one of our engines. No need to worry. We'll simply be arriving one hour later than anticipated. Some 30 minutes later, why the pilot came over the intercom once again. We have lost another engine. We will be arriving two hours later than we anticipated. About an hour later, why the pilot came over the intercom a third time. We have lost our third engine, he said. We will be arriving four hours late at our destination. One of the passengers turned to her husband and said, I'm starting to get worried. If that last engine goes, we'll be up here all night. Well, if you want to be distracted from reality, work yourself up into a great state of worry. If Jesus had any concerns, it was that his disciples would do exactly that. So once again, the story, Jesus has just finished having dinner with these disciples. It's early Thursday evening. He has approximately 24 more hours to be with them. He will be crucified the next day after an exhausting evening of arrest, interrogation, torture. If anyone had reason to worry, it surely was him. But what does he do? He introduces peace. He brings calm to the situation. He looks at his disciples who have just watched Judas leave the dinner table on a mission of betrayal. And he says, where I am going, you cannot come. But don't let your hearts be troubled. He tells them, don't be afraid. At this moment when the tension was probably so thick that you could cut it with a knife, why he says that there is a haven for troubled hearts within his father's home. And there's room for each one of them there. I love what happens next. Look how Jesus spends the last few moments he has with his disciples, calming their fears. 
Chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17 after record this after-dinner conversation, which strengthens their spirits. So listen to some of his promises. First he says, yes, I am leaving, but don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm sending the Holy Spirit to help you remember all the things that I have taught you. Secondly, he says, don't have troubled hearts because I leave my peace with you. Not the peace of this world, but my peace. And there he says, don't let your hearts be troubled because I am the vine and you are the branches. You will bear fruit as long as you remain connected to me. Make me the source. And fourth, which is a wonderful saying, he says, I love you. Now let me ask, have you heard your Lord say, I love you? to you? If not, let me be the one who says it on his behalf to you this day. I love you. Fifth, he is frank with them. He tells them the world is going to hate you, but don't have troubled hearts about it. You don't belong to the world. Remember, they persecuted me first, and no servant is greater than his master. And lastly, he, he is honest. He tells them that they will grieve when he leaves. But one day, oh, one day, he tells them your grief will turn into unbelievable joy. And then he prays for them. Prays for himself. Prays for each of us. Isn't that a remarkable after-dinner conversation? The Gospel of John has 21 chapters, and five of them record the events of Thursday night around the dinner table the day before Jesus' death. Jesus wants them to be ready, to be calm, to have and be free of a troubled heart. Jesus was most likely familiar with the psalm that we shared a few moments ago. The psalmist wrote, In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. I like the way that message translates, the way the message translation provides this verse. It reads, I run to you, God. I run for dear life. Don't let me down. Take me seriously this time. Get down on my level and listen and please, no procrastination. There is much in our world that today that creates worry and fear. Many of us are reconfiguring our homes and churches to be fortresses against a very deadly foe, COVID-19. Armed with masks and disinfectant, we raise the drawbridge and fortify our homes in a society-wide attempt to flatten the curve. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was caught in that place we all find ourselves, yearning to trust in God when faced with the imminent and overwhelming power of the enemy. He gave witness to his faith in a poem set as by the hymn, By Gracious Power. It's in our ELW hymnal. Stanzas three and five voice his praise of God and his witness to us. And when this cup you give is filled to brimming with bitter suffering hard to understand, we take it thankfully and without trembling out of so good and so beloved a hand. By gracious power so faithfully protected, so quietly, so wonderfully near, we live each day in hope with you beside us and go with you through every coming year. Living each day in hope, going with God through every coming year. What does that look like in this awkward and dangerous time? Well, all we have to do is take a look around. It looks in part like what a community of saintly sinners the church is doing in response to the isolation of COVID-19 that it imposes on us. We've seen that some high school youth, while accompanied by their parents, is standing in for older adult volunteers in a neighborhood food pantry. The neighborhood was food insecure before the pandemic and the need for food assistance has grown threefold. Fear grows in isolation. The church has deployed old technology 
in telephone calls to members and to mailing important notes to them, especially to those who don't have access to or facility with the internet. Sunday school, youth groups, Bible study, exercise groups have all migrated online and pastors record messages to be reviewed at home. One congregation I know engages the congregation in worship with the pastors, musicians, lectors, and soloists in their own homes as they are members of the congregation. Some knowledgeable person is at the switch moving almost seamlessly from one worship leader to another and all unmute themselves for the passing of the peace and naming those in need of prayer and the Lord's Prayer. It is possible. We will find new ways to engage people in worship and prayer and draw them into the community where we hear and celebrate this marvelous mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So let us pause. There is much worry and anxiety in our world, and my prayer is that we take time to remember what kind of peace Jesus offers to us. It's the kind of peace that prevails in the thick of the battle. It's the kind of peace that looks at death, sickness, and illness, and knows that they have ultimately been conquered in Christ's own body. This peace alone says to us with the psalmist, what a stack of blessing you have piled up for those who worship you, ready and waiting for all who run to you to escape an unkind world. You hide them safely away from the opposition. As you slam the door on those oily, mocking faces, you silence the poisonous gossip. Blessed God, his love is the wonder of the world. Indeed, God's love is that wonder for each one of us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for this marvelous word from Jesus that stills that troubled heart within each of us. And at the same time, why speaks to us ever so lovingly words of promise and hope. Strengthen us in this time. Grant us your grace. Bless us with your spirit of peace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We believe in God the Almighty who hovered in love over the primeval chaos and uttered creation into existence out of a holy mess. We believe in the one who breathed the breath of life into human and engendered the primal family and community into being. We believe in the magnificent signature of God's image in every human being, signed in infinite variety and sewn in multicolored splendor, even when it is humanly difficult to experience it in our damaged bodies. We believe in the self-relevatory signature of God in Jesus Christ who came to restore healing and wholeness into every fiber of our existence. We believe in Jesus Christ who came to show that salvation is healing and wholeness and who opened our eyes that we may see each other into God's image. Beyond the troubling stereotyping and systemic use of race, ethnicity, class, sexuality, disability, and other identity markers to divide and fragment us. We believe in Jesus who came to open our hearts to the God who so loved the world and who calls forth discipleship from among us to the alleviation of human suffering, that we may see the whole world of ours as never before, as a God-loved, God-breathed, and God-reconciled world. We believe in the crucified God who embraces with his wounded arms those who die alone at this time. We believe in the resurrected Savior who invites us to touch his wounds if we lack belief during these times of paralyzing fear and numbing trauma. We believe in the Holy Spirit who fosters connected relationships across the divides while we sit with ourselves. We believe in the Holy Spirit who always pushes the church to reach out to the margins and enter into the exilic homes through the gifts of technology, nudging each of us to birth hope and resilience. We also believe that the digital divide is human created and greed sponsored and the frontline workers embody flesh and blood communication. We believe that beyond the ravages of time in this pandemic, we will be restored into wellness and wholeness with different understandings of what it is to be the church in the world. We believe that one day we will be fully restored into God's image and God's healed body. Then wholeness will be the theme of the great orchestral music of the church and the cosmos. Until then, we build bridges of healing and reconciliation with each other in God's creation. Therefore, we will commit ourselves every day to healing and wholeness until that day. Amen. Amen. I want to say a word of thanks to your ongoing support and the ways that uh, you have continued to provide for these ministries. We invite you to continue to support and to pray on these behalf. We now turn to the prayers of the day at the Celebrate Insert. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, Mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Humble us, created God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Align our ways with your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. We name those that we are concerned for in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our prayer. God, we ask that all who are affected by this virus be held in your loving care. In this time of uncertainty, help us to know what is ours to do. We know you did not cause this suffering, but that you are with us in it and through it. Help us to recognize your presence in acts of kindness, in moments of silence, and in the beauty of the created world. Grant peace and protection to all of humanity for their well-being and for the benefit of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing song this day is, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May you have a blessed day and a blessed week.